I'm Caitlin Boric, and I hate elevator etiquette, or the lack thereof. Welcome to Grumble Goat. My name is Matt Labodka, and this is a show about all the small things that drive me insane. Let's grumble. I like what elevators do, what they provide. My body enjoys that, in which I do not have to go up or down stairs. But I guess it's just the change in society. Once you enter an elevator, everyone is very uncomfortable. Everyone is very aware of themselves. You know, I think my building has it figured out of how to behave in an elevator perfectly, or at least the majority of people do. You walk in the elevator, you mumble some sort of like a hi, how you doing? Typically, we ask each other, how's the family? How's everyone doing? Is everyone okay? Is everyone well? Or we usually talk about the weather. And then you get to your floor. As you exit, you say, have a great day. Take care. And I think that is the perfect way to act in an elevator. Simple elevator conversation. Anything else is so uncomfortable. But I guess back in the day, there used to be or there still are suggested elevator laws in New York City. The only two I can really remember are you must face the door and not talk to anybody. And I guess the idea is that if the elevator breaks down, you don't feel obligated to talk to people. And I don't think it needs to be that big of a deal. But it does turn into that. I have a woman, she lives directly below me. If we walk a little bit too loud, she's banging on our ceiling. But this woman will shove people out of the elevator. Or if she's having a different day, she will jump into the elevator and tell me all about her dating problems or whatever is going on, whatever she's up to date with. And it's just nuts. And I don't like being in charge of the buttons. It's fine to just push the button to say, let's go to street level. That's easy, obviously. But the pressure comes in which to hold the door or to close the door. Now, everyone that's in the elevator is looking at you to close the door. And yet someone is running towards the elevator and they have made eye contact with you and they want to make that elevator. I don't like that pressure. It's just all very uncomfortable in there. It is very small. There's a younger generation that's moved into my building and I don't like the way they ride the elevator. They have their headphones on, their nose is in their phone, and that's all fine. But I'm still expecting the, hey, how are you? Any of that. They just exit. And honestly, I find it rude. Like, I guess in theory, you could say that the younger kids are following New York protocol in which you just face the door and you are absolutely silent. I just don't think they need to be as uncomfortable as they are. They make me so nervous. I get so claustrophobic in elevators. Oh, and I get so anxious. I love jumping in an elevator. That's not okay. It's certainly not acceptable. But God, that's the best feeling. I'm Caitlin Boric, and I hate elevator etiquette. And that's the grumble. Grumble, 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 grumble. What? Grumble, 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 grumble. What's got your goat? For the latter half of the show, we'll bring in my better half, Veronique, for an unpretentious look and a segment we call What's Got Your Goat? Welcome back to Grumble Goat Studios. We're here in the holiday season, and we have a guest. We do have a guest. Yes. Oh, my God. Holiday so many guests. guests. These, okay, it's the holiday season, so we have to share Grumble Goat That's with everybody. Right. Get everybody in the studio. That's right. Caitlin Borek is here. <gasps> Yay! I'm so happy to be a holiday guest. Caitlin, welcome. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. How are you doing today? Great. Caitlin, you are an artist. You're an actor. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I studied the musical pretend. And have been pursuing it ever since. Musical pretend. Yes, oh I my love God. that. I and, love musical pretend. And you have a I. gorgeous voice. Thanks. I think you are a Cinderella incarnate. You have played her a couple times. Yeah, I got to do her in. Oh yeah, you were at the her. fireside. Yes, I played Cinderella at the fireside, and I got to do it in front of my then four-year-old niece, and so I got <gasps> oh. major points. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Those are crazy ant points. Uh, she was hilarious. We asked her, like, did you like the show? And she's like, well, obviously I loved my auntie, but I didn't understand how the townspeople were the aristocrats or the dancers were the... <laughs> she didn't understand the concept of an ensemble. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, Lennox, there is a budget in regional musical theater. Yes. But surely they <laughs> yes. changed outfits, though, right? Yes, they did change outfits, okay. but they were the same humans. Okay. She, yeah, see. she recognized their face. Kaylin, are you up to anything right now, acting-wise, or playing pretend? Uh, playing pretend, uh, very much singing. I am in an operetta called HMS Pinafore that's coming up. It's with New York Gilbert and Sullivan players. I auditioned for them seven years ago, desperately wanted to work for them. And then one day they finally pulled me from file and they finally had a spot open for me. And we are opening Pinafore at Cape Playhouse on Hunter College's campus on December 30th. 
Oh Amazing. my God. Amazing. Congratulations. Wow. Thanks. That's great. And that plug sounded very rehearsed. Is that part of the rehearsal process? <laughs> Memorizing a plug. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had to look at the date earlier and just like, don't forget the date. Don't forget the date. Remember how to say the date. <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> yeah. That's half of recording in the studio. It's just trying to remember what you're supposed to say. Right. Yeah. Because we did rehearse this before we started recording. No. <laughs> no, we didn't. It's I have no that. idea what's happening. <laughs> I'm very confused. You live here oh i do <laughs> you do kaylin uh, holidays are coming up would you have plans for the holidays are you going home you're from chicago well, we don't need to put all of our eggs into christmas like we can do whatever we want with what we want to be enthusiastic about that's and... blasphemous you take that back <laughs> I, you know what? all the eggs go into christmas <laughs> if people were to say that about halloween i'd flip out so i have to <laughs> i agree <laughs> that's right you're a you're a big halloweener i love i am a, you, I am you a are halloweener. a halloweener yeah. i am my, my parents met on halloween <gasps> it's kind of a uh, yeah, it was it was in her building. It was like a brownstone in Chicago. There was a party in the garden apartment and she was a sexy cop and my dad was a scary, scary monster. Ooh, yes. well, that works. Yeah, that goes together yeah. like peas in a pod. It definitely makes sense. She's so like, as the years go by. Let me handcuff you, monster. And Mr. Take you monster. into the station. <laughs> You don't belong out here on the streets. Oh, Come into my closet. You guys have been so wonderful about hosting holidays. Um, oh, yeah. We like to do that. Yeah. That has Host. been such a pleasure. And then I've also noticed you guys are on the fifth floor. Fifth floor walk up. We yeah. Are. We are. Yeah. yeah that, we this is our contribution stairs. to our friends is we give them a little bit of cardio. Keeps us in shape. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we don't tell you you have to walk up five feet. Yeah, that's not on the invite. That's no, not on that's the invite. the pleasure. It's the surprise. Upon arrival. <laughs> yes. No, I feel invigorated after that five floor walk up. Do you have, what, what floor are you on in your apartment? I'm on the fourth floor. Do you have a, an elevator or do you have the stairs? I have two Elevators. I have a Whoa. newer elevator and an older elevator. Oh, nice. Two Which one, elevators. Two. Which one do you prefer? The newer one. The okay. older one, it does the thing where there's a typical elevator door that is sliding in, and then there's another door that you pull open. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the older one. And then sometimes the ceiling roof isn't there, and you can see <laughs> all the way to the sky because there's a skylight apparently in there. Sometimes the ceiling roof isn't there? Correct, correct. They take it out and then they forget to put it. I don't, they do This is like Disney's Haunted Mansion? <laughs> this is terrifying. This is terrifying. Do you see, do you see like the cords that are yeah. like pulling do you, do you up have the to thing? The do you have to it's pull the cords scary. yourself? Is that how it works? No, no, you don't have to pull the cords. You have to push the buttons a couple of times to make sure that they heard you, felt you. Yeah. Do you ever double check to make sure the floor is still there? <laughs> the floor is typically there actually if you look on the floor you see cockroaches like the ah! size of like your hand okay so don't look at the floor don't look don't at the floor don't look, don't look, look, at the look up don't smell just don't close pop. your eyes and pray just, and just press the button did you know that there were new york laws with elevators there's only two laws i can really remember you enter the elevator and the requirements are that you face the door and you do not speak to anyone. It's like subway rules. It's like you, you get in a crammed space. You pretend nobody else is there. You just stare at your phone or exactly. the wall and just pretend. But that feels classist a little. <laughs> well, and it depends on the elevator that you're in, too. Like, I like the way the majority of my fellow tenants handle our elevators mm -hmm. in that you walk in, you kind of grumble, hey, uh, oh, hello, how are you? You ride the elevator, you get to your floor and you say, have a nice day exit the elevator. That is the perfect elevator ride. That, in my that's opinion. great. It covers yeah. all the social requirements, yeah. but also like gives them the space. It gives the small talk in the elevator. Well, and that's the thing. I'm a culprit of talking to people that don't talk yeah. to people that may not want to talk to me. Yeah. To, I'm a talker. I'm yeah. a talker. And I, I'm, I get nervous sometimes. So that's when I also like to talk. And then when you get on the elevator, oh, hey, how are you doing? Or I, there's always that moment of like, do I say something? Do I not say something? This is awkward and weird. I do want to say something. I want to acknowledge this person. Yes. So to have to say, have a nice day is like, oh, they liked me. Yes. Isn't that, that's so weird. It's so weird. You want to be liked in the elevator. Well, it's not you even know? liked. It's just to me. Me, that is just basic manners. And okay. uh, there's newer kids that are in my building and they come in, they have their headphones on, their faces in their phone. I think that's fine. That's the way to do it. And you don't even have to, you, you know, scratch the beginning greeting. I want the exit greeting. I want you to say, have a nice day, be well. Anything, anything yeah. at all. They say nothing or they like bolt out. And well, I don't, I don't think word. you're required. If you don't say, if in the words of the great Glenn Yarba, if you never say hello, you won't have to say goodbye. 
Oh. Uh, oh, and actually, I was chatting with a friend about this, and that was kind of their argument of like, if you there wasn't that initial greeting, you don't need to say goodbye. But I kind of disagree with that. I've never, ever, ever thought about that. If you don't say hello to someone, you don't have to say goodbye. Yeah. I've never, never heard thought about that, that or thought about that before. Well, this is, this is, you guys didn't ask me who Glenn Yarba was. Yeah, who is that? Who is Glenn Yarba? I didn't he, know who that was. He wrote the music for the animated Hobbit movie. If you never say hello, you won't have to say goodbye. How do I know that jingle and not that person? The greatest adventure is what lies ahead. That's, that's Glenn Yarba for you. Oh. Amazing. Um, but yeah, no, I think what he means is if you don't let people into your lives, then you won't have to ever say goodbye to them. It's a well, sad. Well, that's beautiful. Oh, that's now I got like, chills just thinking about that that's part. It's kind of like people dealing with like a dead pet and not wanting to replace the pet. <sighs> I know. But I don't words. think if we share an elevator ride with somebody, we've like spent time in each other's lives. That's just a no. form. Like I don't say goodbye to the people that I rode the subway with. I'm not like, oh, bye guys, well, bye. And that's a different a elevator. One. That is a whole other bag of anxiety. Yeah, that's a side to side elevator. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do the conversations differ depending on which elevator you're in? Yes. Okay, because 100%. everyone's afraid of the scary elevator with no roof and cockroaches, <laughs> right? And funny enough, that's my favorite elevator. What? Is it comfortable? Sorry, not my favorite elevator, but a more comfortable elevator than a subway elevator. Well, she's a Halloweener, don't forget. Okay. So <laughs> she likes the spider webs. <laughs> yeah. She likes the bats like flying into elevator. the roofless elevator. I love the Explorers well, no, Club I, elevator. Mm. Oh, the so Explorer. Scary. That's the old. That, I think that's one of the oldest second. elevators. Second yes. oldest elevators in New York City, and that is terrifying. But it's cool to see how many so latches cool. that they used to have to get into an elevator, to yes. a box, to make you go up. But it's like, and it's wooden, <laughs> and you hear the the sounds of the wood of like. Yeah. Well, imagine like, imagine if you were the first person to experience an elevator. Like they're like, oh, get into this coffin shaped box. That's suspended over nothing. Right. It'll take you to another floor. Right. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Sure, it will. Will an elephant fit in there? Okay. <laughs> Do you, you take a lot of elevator rides with elephants? I'm just saying that the reason why there was this bridge that people wouldn't walk across unless because an elephant won't walk on anything that's unsturdy. I, so I an think elephant it was more wouldn't to prove get that... into an elevator. It would be like, no, I'm not doing that. Well, you know? also, they, they just, <laughs> also, they just aren't like, invited on the elevator. <laughs> I do not hold the door for elephants. <laughs> yeah. I could. Yeah, hit that door closed button <laughs> real fast. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, uh, speaking of noises and elevators, mm. um, in this post-pandemic world, all of a sudden, a sneeze on an elevator oh, is no longer a simple God. bless you. No, yes. it's not. You're like, do I have my mask? Right out of my well, mask. Well, the mask on the elevator too. You, the elevator door opens. Someone's already in there, and they have a mask, and you don't have yours. It's so awkward. That's why I kind of like to traipse my arm along the door when I enter an elevator, as if to signal to my neighbors, "You may come in this elevator with me." Wait, you know? what? Do you know what I mean? What is no, this maneuver I've you speak okay, of? Okay, as you walk into an elevator. Mm -hmm. I traipse my arm against the door to be like, you may join me. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, an elevator rider. I try not to be predatory, but I certainly invite. <laughs> Have you ever been, real quick, Chicago reference? Yes. The coal mine elevator in the Museum of Science and Industry. I don't recall. I'm so sorry. I'm Get so out of here. You said you were from Chicago. No, and this is the best. out of the studio. <laughs> Guys, I, last time I was home, my phone died and I was on the L and I was so lost. It's not a grid system. And I had no idea. Where you are was. joking with me right now. Uh, like, I know. I, I just I'm so disappointed in you, I'm Caitlin. I'm so sorry. I mean, there's a you're... whole coal mine exhibit below the MSI. You take the coal mine elevator. It's just like you're working in the mines. It's like just a cage. That's so cool. That's cool. Why don't we have that here? Yeah. Because this city sucks. I've <laughs> well, said it. I've said it a thousand times. <laughs>
I was on an elevator just yesterday where we all got on, said goodbye. Okay, goodbye, everybody. And we got on the elevator. And then the person that was next to the buttons didn't hit any of the buttons. And so you just sat there. And so we sat there. And then the doors just opened again to the same crew we just said goodbye to. <laughs> and we were like, what? If you stand in the spot where you the buttons are, the buttons. you're obligated to push the button. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I, ha- I don't want to stand in that spot ever. I hate that spot. Oh, I- really? It makes me stressed. Oh, I like to press the buttons. Good. I'm glad that there are people that like to push yeah. the buttons. And I also want to, uh, like, some when I'm there, I'm like, I want to say where to. You know, it's like, <laughs> I think I just kind of got in the throes of that position the other day. And there was a woman that was equidistant. And everyone looked to us to push the button, and then she looked to me. And I was so upset because I was like, girl, you are just as close as I am. And she did this, like, exaggerated reach (laughs) to push the button. And I was further. I swear I was, like, an inch or two further. Did you, like, exaggeratedly, like, get out of her way? Like, like make room for her by, like, like a Matrix style trying to get the button? I did a full introvert collapse and just (laughs) kinged into myself. (laughs) I can't press the button. Here's the thing. If you start saying, like, oh, man, the weather out there, and they're like, yeah, I know, it's coming down. And then you've started a conversation, but there's nowhere to go. No, there's so many places to go. I agree. I agree. There are so many different places to go. I love talking about the weather. Well, okay. I I, <laughs> I don't love talking about the weather. I could talk about it all I was gonna day. Segue. <laughs> no, no, just like a segue from the weather to like another common crazy thing happens. But like, I love just that collective. Like, you make eye contact with someone when maybe there's an unpredictable person, but like yes. something that we all know and have experienced and are like, we're secretly looking out for each other. Yes. And, and the like, only time that you need that knowing look at another person on an elevator is when the third person on the elevator just farted. Oh, that, that, oh that's happening. Like, mm. Farting on elevators. Um, I didn't mean to make that a whole topic. No, well, I think okay. it is. It's a stupid it joke. It is. Well, uh, crop dusting certainly is in Well, I love vicinity. crop dusting. Um, certainly serving. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so fun oh my god (laughs) i mean it's not fun but it's like i'm not holding this in but i'm not gonna pass gas at the table the deserving parties (laughs) it's so satisfactory oh my gosh that's so funny there's a lot of people nobody's gonna blame it on me everyone has to experience nobody's gonna blame it on the cute blonde (laughs) that's right i'm never we're all equal let me tell you (laughs) what about the guy that works in an elevator right Mm, i'm grateful for them Yeah. Well, okay. Does somebody work in the creepy elevator? No, alas. (laughs) When the guy works in the elevator, where does he fart? Oh, in the elevator. Oh, well, when you fart and you smell your own fart. It kind of smells good sometimes. It kind of, like, yeah, no, it's kind of comforting. It's yeah. Like, yeah, no. It's kind of comforting. It's like, well, this is my space now. Yeah, like, yeah. no, it smells right. It smells like what I ate today. Like, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an episode of Grumble Goat. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Labotka. I'm Veronique Hurley. Please subscribe. I hate when people say, please subscribe. Grumble, grumble, grumble. I do not hold the door for elephants. Absolutely not. Thanks for listening. And while I have your attention, if you've been enjoying the show, don't forget to leave a review and don't forget to grumble goat responsibly and share with a friend.